Hi there, I'm Robin, I'm here with Zen Audio, and today we're going to take a look at the track panel. Now, uh, a track's track panel is uh, the place where we get to see its ins and outs, um, its effects, maybe software instruments, and any MIDI effects, as well as the level uh, panning, mute, solo, and all the kind of things that you'd expect from a channel strip. Now, there's a number of ways to get into the track panel and navigate through the different tracks. We can either click on the track, which opens its track panel, and then we can use the buttons at the bottom to cycle through our various tracks. Uh, we can also use a keyboard command, which is TT, while hovering over any track, anywhere in the arrangement view. And we can then press T up and down to cycle through the various tracks with the keyboard. Now the third way is probably the nicest way to navigate the track panels, uh, and that's to use um, trackpad gestures. And we do this by hovering over a track's track leader and doing a two finger swipe to the right like this. And then we can cycle um, through the various track panels of our session by doing the same thing, two fingers, but up and down. And then when we're finished, uh, if we swipe two fingers to the left, we leave the track panel. Okay, so let's open up one of these tracks and take a look. So at the top, we have the input terminal, and this is where we connect what we'd like to input into this track. So for example, here I have the, um, the fourth input on my interface. Um, to add other hardware inputs, we press the plus icon here and we get to choose from the list of available inputs from our hardware. We can also choose tracks to input from as well. As I'm in an audio track, any track in my session that outputs audio, I can feed into the input of this audio track. And then if we take a look at the instrument track, we get a list of hardware MIDI inputs. Currently we don't have any tracks that are outputting MIDI, so there's nothing to input into this track from the tracks menu. And as you can see, there's a little dial here. Um, for MIDI inputs, this dial controls the incoming velocity, and we can easily change the dial by scrolling two fingers up and down on the dial. And then if you want to reset, just press with two fingers, and it's reset. If you go over to the audio track, this dial controls the input level. So um, interface input four, which is my only input here, I can control the level that it comes into the track at. And if I want to delete an input, all I have to do is click the delete icon next to the input. Moving back to my instrument track now, um, down here we have some MIDI effects and you'll see these on both the instrument and MIDI tracks. The first one is Quantize, and Quantize controls how much what you play is then shifted into the grid, making it more in time. If you play a little bit loose and you have the Quantize turned on, then depending on the, uh, the value here, it will shift to the grid and sound more in time. This will shift it to the nearest 16th note, and then we can choose with this dial just how rigid that Quantization is. And I can change the dial again with two fingers on the trackpad up and down and reset with a two finger press. So right now I've got the quantization set to 16th notes. Um, what I'm gonna do now is just play something in fairly sloppy and you'll see how the quantization brings it into time. <laughs> So that's basically how the quantization works. Change it to um, quarter notes, you'll hear that it shifts even more to the grid. And just to demonstrate the amount, here are the notes' uh, original positions with zero quantization amount. Um, and then if we move the dial upwards, you'll see that the notes shift to the grid. Taking a look at the note repeat, um, what the note repeat does is allow you to press a single key and hold it and then get successive repeated notes. So if I put it onto 16th notes and play something. And all I was doing there was um, holding down a note. And then this dial just next to it is the dial for swing. And you'll notice that the groove changes as I turn this up. Mm -hmm. 
taking a look now at our instrument section. Um, down here, we get to choose our software instruments. So if you press the little keyboard symbol, we get a list now of all of our various software instruments. If you want to edit the instrument, just give it a click and it opens in its own window. And we can also power down the instrument with this button here. We can add new effects here by pressing the plus symbol and then we get a list of all of our various effects. Now if you want to edit the plugin's parameters, uh, just give it a click again and we get a new window. And you can power down the plugin by pressing the power symbol. And then if you want to delete the plugin, simply press the delete symbol. Now on both audio and um, instrument tracks, uh, we get to add audio plugins. Um, but on MIDI tracks, um, the effects section is used for MIDI effects. So for example, if you have an arpeggiator plugin or a transposing plugin or something along those lines, then you can put it in there. Taking a look now at the output terminal, um, this is where we can send the output of this current track, maybe to another track or to a hardware output. So for example here, I'm outputting to the to the main output of my interface. Um, I can change the level of this here with the dial, and if I want to, I can delete it. And I'm just going to go ahead and add that in again. And you see down here that we have some more hardware outputs. And we can also output to tracks from the track menu. Now, depending on which kind of track you're using, the tracks will output different signals. For example, the MIDI tracks only output MIDI, and the instruments and audio tracks output audio. And a really nice thing about ALK's uh, routing options is we have this thing called symmetric routing. And what this means is I can edit my ins and outs and the levels of those ins and outs uh, from both sides of where they connect. Um, and I think it's better if I just demonstrate this. So let's say on this synth track, um, I want to send some of it to uh, my reverb track. And I decide that I want lots of reverb, so I'm going to turn this dial up. And then now if I go to my, uh, my reverb track, I have the same dial um, on the input of the reverb track. So I can go ahead and change the dial. Maybe I decide that it's too much reverb. So I'll turn this down again, maybe to here. And then now if I go back to my synth channel, you can see that the reverb dial is as we just set it on the reverb track. So this means that um, whichever track you're on, you'll be able to edit everything to do with that track without having to leave it. Now, for many people, this could be the most familiar area of the track panel, which works much like uh, an analog mixer. Down here, we have the level, which we can operate by clicking and dragging, and also with two fingers on the trackpad. And that can be reset again by two finger pressing. And we can also change the level with the keyboard command, which is G, and then up and down. And this will change the level by 1 dB. And over here is the pan, and we can pan to the left, pan to the right, and then reset with two fingers. Um, over here is power, and this works in the opposite to a mute switch. So when the power is turned on, we hear the track, and when it's turned off, the track is disabled. And there is also a key command for power. If you press TP, this toggles the power on and off. Clicking the solo button will uh, disable every other track apart from this one. And there's a key command for solo, which is TS, which turns solo on and off. And down here is the audition indicator. Currently we're on hover audition, and we can change this to manual audition. And the keyboard command for um, changing the auditioning type is TA, and this will cycle through hover auditioning, Manual audition off and manual audition on. Um, there is another tutorial online which gives a little bit more detail about auditioning in ALK. And from this track menu here, we can duplicate the track, uh, we can delete the track, we can lock the performances on this track, uh, which means that when I record over this area in the song, that it won't record into this record loop. And lastly, back to the top, we can rename the track just by clicking on its name here. So I'm going to call this one Organ. And the key command for rename is TR. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful and we'll see you next time.